Welcome everybody uh, to the nationwide prayer campaign to end abortion forever. Um, today we will have Father Ernie Rush talking about Rush talking about purity, and we need that. I mean, I think if the world changes and we become more pure, we will eradicate abortion. So let's start praying. Thank you, guys. Thank you again so, for praying um, this daily prayer. We will have Father Ernie, and I thank him so much for speaking on purity. It is such a vast subject, but it's so important because we see how polluted the minds and hearts of people are now in today's life. And in order for us to stop this abortion, we can't, we just can't inculcate laws and just teach on morality. But we have to teach that purity is something to be desired by each and every one of us. So we pray that the Lord brings purity upon the land and washes us with his clean water, the water that comes from his heart that was pierced and spills forth through the side with his blood. So here's Father Ernie. God bless you all. So St. Paul reminds us in his letters to rid ourselves of all vice, all lust, all adulterous desires, all licentiousness, drunkenness, and all things that would be contrary to the Christian faith. Our society today is laden with all these types of temptation, and humanity is continually bombarded by temptations from Satan to give in to desires of the flesh. Purity, as we say, starts with us. We need to remain pure. We remain pure in spirit, pure in flesh, uh, and pure in body, mind, and soul. It calls us to understand the dignity of the human life, the dignity of the human being, not to objectify them or to degrade them into an object. And that's what's happening in our society. We've gone from knowing the beauty of our creation that we were created by God in love and for love, to love and to be loved. And we've made that love a flesh or lustful love in which we believe love is only through affections and through imit 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 intimacy and intimate relationships with our girlfriends, our boyfriends, our husbands, our wives. Um, but true pleasure is found in the desire to please one another, not through uh, fleshy types of appeal, but through a true desire for the person, for the good of the person, for the love of the person, for the sanctification of the person, to elevate their dignity. You know, Jesus, uh, when he encountered the woman at the well, when he encountered the, the adulterous woman, uh, did not condemn them, but saw them for more than what they are. They were not the sum of their sins, or the sum of the brokenness that they were. They were the sum of a beautiful creation by God, created for love and to be loved. He elevated their dignity. Instead of condemning them, instead of ridiculing them and reprimanding them for their sins, he elevated them to the dignity. He says, does anyone here uh, condemn you? So neither do I condemn you. The woman at the well, he said, if only you knew uh, who was offering this life-giving water, you would have been taken. And she says, sir, give me some. He could read her heart and her soul. Of course, he was God. He was Jesus. But, nonetheless, he brought them to a deeper understanding of what their value was, what their true worth was. And unfortunately, in society, uh, we can refer back to uh, blessed uh, Paul VI, you know, in his uh, encyclical, Humana Vitae, which everybody thought was an uh, encyclical based upon uh, contraception, and of course it did address contraception and, uh, and abortion and, and the uh, disregard for human life, uh, but that's what humanity Vitae was, human life, the doctrine on human life, what human life was, the dignity of human life. And he warned us that if we began to objectify body, if we began to objectify women, 
uh, contraception, abortion, and all kinds of sins of the flesh would become a normal, would become a moral uh, acceptance in society. Our, our scriptures and our gospels are uh, extremely contrary to that. It reminds us that we're not created um, for fleshy desires. We are created to be in eternal existence with our God, to be with Him in love, and uh, to recognize that before we could even love, He loved us first. That's why He's a merciful God. That's why He's a loving God. But it doesn't negate the, the responsibility for us to live in harmony with Him, in communion with Him, respecting the natural law and the natural order of things and the divine law and how that affects us as human beings and, and how it ultimately affects us in our divine existence in heaven with God, that eternal existence where there is no more death and sin. So what does it mean for us to be pure? It means for us to recognize our own dignity and the dignity of others, not to objectify, not to make a person an object in which we can utilize them for our own benefit. And that's what happens with pornography. That's what happens with uh, you know, prostitution, uh, all these things, even uh, you know, human trafficking, trafficking of minors, and, and the sexual uh, trafficking business, all these things, and drugs, alcohol, it all comes down to the dignity of the person. You know, even in, in you know psychological counseling, when you're dealing with people, you, you don't deal with the person because they're an alcoholic, because they're a drug addict, because they're a prostitute, because they're an adulterous woman or an adulterous man. You deal with them first and foremost on the fact that they are created in the image and likeness of God and that they have a dignity uh, to themselves that surpasses what any of the identifying factors that people would place upon them, the marks, the labels that they would place upon them, that their, their personhood is more than that. They are not the sum of their brokenness, of their sinfulness, but they are the sum of their creation a beautiful creation created in the image and likeness of God for love and to be loved. Once we grasp that, once we understand that, and once we identify that it's not all about us, it's not about humanity, it's about humanity understanding our God. See, in, in our human nature, we tend to have a hard time submitting ourselves, uh, submitting ourselves to others, but more importantly, submitting ourselves to God, recognizing that we are created not uh, to just make ourselves better and, and to be the best at something or to be uh, you know, applauded and recognized by others, but to really submit ourselves to our God, to render ourselves to his love so that we can be transformed, that we can identify with the love we've been created in and the dignity we've been created in and the beautifulness of our beings. You know? We would uh, be told by St. Bonaventure that we are the glory of God's creation, that God created us, and then he, in essence, placed us above the angels, even though the angels are superior to us. They are supernatural beings. They, they have higher powers and understanding and knowledge than we do. God made us the beauty of, our, of his creation. He elevated us because of that dignity. We have to honor that. Society today does not honor that. Society self, uh, is selfish and self-sufficient. To themselves and onto themselves. They see me, myself, and I as the most important. Uh, they negate the presence of God in their life and only they sometimes seek God when He's only a benefit for them, when they're in need or they have a necessity and they, they want something or they desire something. Uh, but when life is going good and everything seems to be nice for them, uh, God is a second thought. Only uh, maybe they might even say thank you or something like that. Uh, so, you know, uh, our purpose. Uh, you know, by you know, according to the old catechism, is you know why we're created. We we're created to know God, to love God, and to be with God in this world and in the next. Uh, that, in reality, is the sole reason for our creation. Although we're more than that, although God has made us more than that, that is the essence of who we are and who we're to be. And, and we cannot uh, do that if we don't recognize that dignity that we have and make it all about me and myself and I. And uh, who cares about others? Uh, all the violence, all the seeing in the world today is because we value things more than we value others or God. And we, and we have to we have to change that. We have to do that. So, you know, the whole idea of the spiritual purity, of, of physical purity, comes from recognizing the beauty and the dignity of the individual. So, in, in, we've let
let us uh, ponder the wisdom of the church, the wisdom of the scriptures, the wisdom of the prophets, the wisdom of the doctrines that we have and believe and profess as Catholics, as Christians, and to identify with that and to know that is the sum of who we are, nothing else, and place that foremost in our lives. And then we can be pure and we can give that example of purity to others, both in body, mind, soul, and spirit, in the flesh, and uh, in all things. That's uh, the most important and the main thing that we have to do, being able to recognize that and submit our will to God, to God's will, not our to realize that God has a plan for us and we must cooperate with that plan, put that plan into action. You know, in the scripture, Jesus, when he was doing all those miracles and he was forgiving sins and casting out demons, and he told his apostles, you know, even greater things than these will you do. He was telling us to identify with that dignity, that great grace that is given to us in our baptism that makes us more than just a pound of flesh or a mixture of water, blood, and flesh, and tissue, that there's something divine in it, there's something uh, put into us, that indelible mark given to us at our baptism, that makes us different than everything else, that makes us a dignified human being with a glory and a grace given to us by God that transcends even time itself. This is the work God has called us to. This is the good work that God has begun in each and every one of us for the moment of our baptism. So let us begin and rejoice, for this is the day the Lord has made, and he has called us by name before he knit us in the womb, he knew us. So if we do this, if we get this, and we begin to establish that purity within ourselves and within others and within society, uh, then we can end all these horrible and uh, terrible sins against love, sins against the love of God. The objectification of women, prostitution, abortion, drugs, pornography, trafficking, all these things can be eliminated if we identify with the beauty and the dignity that each individual has and holds as created in the image and likeness of God. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Father Ernie. He was en route on turnpike when he uh he spoke those words today um so i think it's very important to know who we are in the eyes of god and we could understand the dignity that he gave to us more and more as we dwell inside of his presence and one of the things that i find astounding and awesome is that he is the creator yet he shares that creative power the creative uh work that he does with us in 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 that we could bring children into the world more citizens for heaven he allows us to do that to be part of it a lot of people think that we are creators we're not we share in the creative process and to be able to do that is such a wonderful incredible thing yet with the corruptness of our minds nowadays people don't don't see the value in in that and the treasure that God gives to each human individual so much that we destroy it and how that pains the heart of God and it's up to us that know how to love him back because he's loved us he's shown himself in our misery and he chose us and that's why we have to bring that on and one one little drop of blood could do so I mean love could do so much we're carriers of love he lives and dwells within us. And it doesn't matter the mask that they wear, whether they look miserable, if they look very high class, it doesn't matter. Everybody needs love. And that's what's gonna change the world. Because if you show somebody what their dignity is in the eyes of God, they start believing it. God bless you all. Love you all. Bye-bye. Hi, my name is Karen Jefferson from John Leaves Evangelization. We've been doing this live stream to stop abortion since May 13th, 2020. And we try to do prayers each day, every day, with speakers. If you would like to donate to this worthy cause to stop abortion, something that is righteous in the eyes of God, 
please donate to us at johnleaps.com, johnleaps, L-E-A-P-S.com, or call 800-313-6933. We could really use it, and we thank you very much. God bless you all.